Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you to yet another episode of Overflow. Come on into my goddess lounge. I am welcoming you in. Um, I hope that you find us, your space very comfortable, very soft. When we walk into the goddess lounge, we drop all of the things from the outside world and we put on our spiritual eyes and put on our spiritual ears so that we can hear, that we can see what is here for us. So, welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Rashida Ahmed. If you have not been here before, welcome. Please come on in. If you have, it is a pleasure to be with you yet again. I am excited. I have... Um, a lovely conversation that I would love for us to have today, and we'll be getting into talking about sensual relationships, sensational relationships, and how we can broaden our understanding and our perspectives on what it is to live life sensually, to live life in a way where all of your senses are engaged, and we're going to challenge what we consider all. So come on in. This is going to be a lovely time of enlightenment and of, you know, education in a way that we can really learn, we can grow, we can evolve as humans, as spiritual beings, as people in this world who want to bring forth good and have good happen to us. So before we jump into this conversation, I would love to just take a moment to just pause, take a few deep centered breaths so that we can connect with ourselves first and foremost, connecting with our higher selves, your spirit guides, God, whoever you believe in. This is that moment for you to just check in, give a few seconds of just peace and reverence. So join me. We're going to take our deep breaths in a count of three. And you can inhale softly up through your nose and out gently through your mouth or through your nose, whatever feels the most uh, freeing and comfortable for you. Three, two, one. Inhale. We're going to hold it. And slowly release. Sort of like a balloon. Inhale. Hold. Slow release. One more. Hold it, slow, slow, beautiful, gentle release. Thank you for taking that pause with me, that moment to become present. Uh, whatever you're doing, whatever you're moving through, breath work and breath will always bring us back to center, back to being grounded, back to who we are at the core of who we are. And so I encourage you to use your breath, use the power of that, of that gift uh, to bring you into uh, equanimity, bring you into uh, a collective and divine consciousness that allows you to bring forth the things that you want to bring forth and allows you to release what you no longer want to hold on to. So ah, today, Overflow, we'll be talking about sensual relationships. And I wrote a few notes down just to sort of kind of help keep me um, a little on track, but I also love to allow, you know, the spirit to just kind of flow. So we're going to go with this however we choose, because that is the point of overflow. The point of the overflow is to give from the abundance of what I have already been given, the abundance of what I have already been cultivating and steeping in and loving and learning. And so I get to share from the overflow of that, from what is coming out and spilling from my cup. So <laughs> I don't know where it might go here, um, but I allow that the highs and best good will go there. So 
when I speak about sensual relationships and recognizing what I'm talking about when I'm saying sensual relationships, I'm speaking about engaging all of your senses when relating with yourself and relating with others. So going even beyond the five physical senses that we typically think about when we think about our senses and really going past that into what I would like to consider and categorize these senses as our supernatural senses. And those senses are what help to give us an even more robust and an even more uh, alive uh, interactions with people. So our relationships become more sensual by the nature of our senses are much more engaged. Our senses are much more um, involved. Our senses are, are growing and evolving when we are relating with ourselves and with others. And so why do we want to have sensual relationships? Like, what's the point, right? Why can we just not be okay with the way our relationships are, and you can, <laughs> you can. I will never shame anyone for the choices and decisions that they make. But what I am trying to offer is a new perspective on how we can start looking at our relationships, start looking at how we interact with ourselves so that way we can grow and we can see some positive changes being made within our lives and the lives of others and the world around us at large. So that's the why. That's why it's important to have a sensual, sensual relationships. That's why it's important to have sensational relationships because they enrich the lives of uh, the people around you and your own. And for the most part, we have been hardwired. We have been downloaded with this innate desire to have the best of the best. We have been, we have been wired to want greater than where we may currently be and what we may currently be experiencing. And so having sensual relationships and sensational relationships, and I use these words sort of interchangeably because um, they might titillize something different for you. And so that is why I am choosing to use this language. I would love to start to um, allow us to expand our vocabulary on how we interpret relating right? And recognizing that relating is so much more than perhaps we may have first considered. So engaging your senses, what do I mean by that? So when we are typically relating with people, I can share from my own life, when I'm relating with people, when I'm relating with my family, relating with my partner, relating with my children, relating with, um, you know, my business, my clients, relating with the people, my neighbors, for goodness sakes, like relating with the world around me we are often led by the five senses that we are typically uh, conditioned to use. So that's our, you know, the sight, of, our sense of sight, sorry, our sense of smell, our sense of taste, touch, and our sense of hearing. And so these senses are very critical. I am not asking you to put these senses aside. I'm asking you actually to add to that. You know, we're not subtracting here. We are adding, we are multiplying, we are moving on divine math. <laughs> we're using God's math to evolve and increase our capacities. And so I would like to offer you to consider how you can even heighten those five senses. And so in engaging with your with yourself, for example, and looking to have a more central relationship with yourself, how can you listen to yourself just even more deeply? How can you see yourself even more clearly? How can you offer yourself an experience of touch that, that maybe stimulates things that you haven't yet or you don't often, often experience, right? So these are the ways in which we can endeavor to develop an even more central relationship with ourselves by even using the current senses and then diving even slightly more deeper. Okay, and so when we are asking ourselves how we can develop more central relationships with ourselves, then we have to also be open and honest with how maybe we have not been hearing ourselves clearly, seeing ourselves clearly, um, offering ourselves the most um, uh, touch than which we had not yet experienced, offering ourselves tastes and experiences that we haven't yet considered, 
So these are the ways in which I would love us to start opening up. And when we are learning these things about ourselves, oftentimes the voices that come to play are shame, the voices that come to play are trauma, guilt, um, anxieties, um, fear. These voices often come up first to speak. And because they come up first to speak, depending on your story, depending on your journey, depending on where you are, then that can put you into what we would consider our trauma responses. We start acting and moving and behaving in, from those senses. So our senses now become skewed by the responses that our journey has taught us. Do you understand? I, I, I hope that I'm really making that make sense. So we will start to see ourselves in a way that isn't as clear to how we can be seeing ourselves, but due to whatever experiences that you may have had in life, your view, your vision, your sight of yourself, that sense of sight can now become skewed or is now filtered, even that's a better word, filtered through the lenses of your trauma or of your shame or of whatever, you know, your fears and things of that nature. And so when we start to open up the door to more central relationships, these energies come up typically first for us to look at and navigate. And that's what's actually what's necessary for you to have sensual relationships is accepting, embracing, acknowledging all of those things that arise because they're all a part of your senses. We cannot only expect to only receive and feel and enjoy the, the sensations that we love. You know, we have to be willing and open to experience the ones that we don't always love to experience. And the beautiful thing about this is they just would like to have a space or I would say an audience to communicate what they want to communicate. And once the audience is given, they communicate, they share with you what they need to share with you. And so that could look like you can recognize that, hmm, when I perceive that I made a mistake or when I perceive and I've done something incorrect, there is a narrative that I have. There is a conversation or a dialogue that I may have with myself. That means, how are you hearing yourself? Going back to the sense of, of hearing. How are you hearing yourself? So are you hearing yourself from a lens that is kind of harsh? Are you hearing yourself from a lens that has more compassion? Right? And so if we recognize that, oh, wait, some of the languaging that I am using is, is harsh towards myself, that if I was to speak this exact words verbatim to someone else, they would not receive it in, in a kind way. And that allows us to say, oh, now that I'm hearing myself even more deeply, I hear how I speak to myself. Is that true? Do I believe these things of myself? Do I want to continue to believe these things of myself? And when you start to develop a central relationship with yourself, you get to start having more in-depth conversations with yourself. You get to tell yourself, oh, wait, I, I hear you because I'm hearing myself more correctly, more clearly, more deeply. So I hear you, but I, I don't want to agree with that any longer. Or I no longer want to keep reinforcing what you're saying to me anymore. So let us have a new conversation. Let me tell you something else about myself that I believe because your journey has also told you more about yourself. Your journey may have shown you that you are incredibly resilient, that you are incredibly uh, resourceful, that you are incredibly uh, brilliant. Your journey may have also told you those things too. And so it's now inviting more depth to your sense of hearing when you're speaking with yourself. It's inviting more nuance 
you know, you need more voices at the table. When we are trying to um, impart change and, and create change, we need a plethora of voices and of opinions and um, mindsets to come to strengthen and bolster what you're trying to bring forth. You know, and so if the current or the predominant, I'll say, um, thoughts and language and conversation that you're hearing to yourself isn't edifying, isn't glorifying, then it's time to start considering a new kind of way of hearing yourself. And that's what central relationships really allow us to do. They allow us to have new conversations with ourselves, new ways of seeing who we are when we show up in the world, whether that's just you in the mirror, whether that's you in the boardroom, whatever that is, that allows you to start having more nuance to how you perceive yourself because our senses are so uh, intricate and they are so complex you know, if we even just break down biologically our eyesight, like our eyes are so complex. They are so intricate. The Just the mechanics, the biological mechanics of how our eyesight works and how we receive light in through our eyes that creates pictures and memories and, and recollections and a cognition in our brain so that way our brain makes sense of what we are seeing, what we are not seeing. It's an amazing thing. And it's very complex. And our senses are just as complex. Okay. And so that's just the, that's just the basic five. I would love us to even start to venture even more into our sense of intuition, our sense of like, I feel something deep within me something that I can't maybe necessarily put into words, um, something that I maybe can't express to others in a eloquent way, but I feel this thing deeply. I have a knowing of something. There is a knowing, there is an understanding, there is a, a sense of assurance that your intuition will speak to you. And so when you are engaging in sensual relationships, your intuition also comes to, sh comes to play. It, this is an, a sense that is actually quite useful and valuable in your relationships. When you can intuitively feel something or know something, um, and I don't even just mean in terms of energy and just feeling someone's vibe or understanding your energies and what energies are, are happening. I mean, even going to a sense of you can allow your sense of intuition to help you to heal yourself. You can allow your sense of intuition to give you what you are seeking from another, from, from, but from within, you know? So if you are someone who, like myself, who has had to move through move through relationships that have been hurtful, you know, move through relationships that, that have caused me wounding. One that comes to mind specifically is the relationship that I have had with my mother. We now have a phenomenal relationship, but over the years, that relationship has had its ups and downs, its peaks and valleys. And in healing that relationship, my intuition helps to give me things that my cognitive mind feels that my mother didn't give me or was not able to give me or that I did not receive from her. I hope that is making sense. Like my intuition is able to tap into the needs that I have internally emotional needs, uh, spiritual needs, um, energetic needs. And my sense of intuition is able to navigate and speak with me and give me what I am seeking from another without having to rely on that other to give it to you. You know, um, I want to speak a little bit about 
a a power that I feel that we have, and it is the power of peacemaking. And I feel like that is 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 made through the prayer of forgiveness. I feel like that is made through seeking forgiveness and seeking the um, the liberation that forgiveness offers. And so when we are engaging with peacemaking, and that oftentimes can have to happen internally first before it can be made externally. You know, when we are engaging with the power of forgiveness and engaging with the energies of peacemaking, oftentimes that has to be an internal thing first because we may never receive apologies from Um, a particular person or a situation that you felt was hurtful or uh, detrimental to you. You may never actually receive apologies from it from the outside, but your sense of intuition and your sense of peacemaking allows you to receive that, that which you are yearning from, from the outside, from the inside. And that's what helps to make your relationships more sensational. Because now you are no longer walking around with unmet needs. You are now able to engage and meet those needs for yourself in a sense, in a way that is healing, in a way that opens you up to receive more of the thing that you're actually looking for. You know, my sense of intuition, my sense of allowing myself to be open to receiving forgiveness, be open to hearing um, words of compassion spoken to me from my, my mother, but I had to open that up internally first before I could really be open to hear it externally. Because if I'm being honest with you, there are op- there were times when I heard those words, but I, didn't, I did not receive them in my spirit. I'm not sure if anyone else understands what I mean by that. Like you can hear the words, you can know what someone is, is, is saying to you, but you don't receive it in your soul, you know? And so when we are working with our sense of intuition, it helps us to receive it in a safe way for yourself. So internally, because your in your internal world is your safe place. And if it's not your safe place, then this helps you to create safety within your internal world. And so when your internal world is your safe place, you can now give yourself the things that your external world is seeking and needing, but from a place that is calm, that is peaceful, and that your soul can actually receive. And then that in turn opens up your capacity to receive it externally. And that may not be from that particular person. It may not be from your mother or your father or your, you know, your sister or your brother. It may not be from those people. It may not be from your friends. It may not be from those people who you are looking to have the compassion and the love back from but it opens your capacity to receive it nonetheless. Nonetheless, because there is so much of it to go around. But oftentimes our experiences, our journey, our stories can leave us with feeling that we can only receive that which we are seeking from one particular source or one particular situation or one particular person. And that is not true. Our our true source comes from the God within. Our true source comes from that, that which has created all things. So because our true source comes from there, once you heal and once you start to allow your internal world to feed you, in a way that is edifying, in a way that glorifies you, not self-defecating, in a way that glorifies and edifies you, 
when you allow your internal world to feed you that bread, you open your capacity to receive it outside of yourself. And I will also say, if with enough time, actually I don't even want to word it that way, with patience, with surrendering how this life will go for you, you may very well experience that which you are seeking from the people and the experiences that which you are seeking it from. So if that is receiving compassion, love, grace, understanding, respect from a parent, from a spouse, from, you know, whoever, whatever, your finances, from your choices. If you would like to receive and, and feel that love reflected back with enough patience, you will, you will. But oftentimes we have to allow ourselves to receive it from other channels, other um, avenues and streams to build your capacity, to build the healing, the foundation of healing needed to support it, to support that energy coming to you from the source in which you perceive created the wound. And I say perceive because we all have our own experiences, right? And so what I may consider as a wounding the other person may not. So it is perception. So I would love us to start to open up our mind and thoughts and heart to more sensational and sensual relationships, engaging ourselves with the power of our senses, you know, engaging yourself with the power of your mind and the power that your mind actually possesses. You know, we can really just think something and bring it <laughs> to life. Like we can bring it to being. Um, and, and, and I really want us to engage that particular sense when we are interacting with others and interacting with ourselves, you know, I have worked with couples. I have worked with people where me coming into their life was literally because of a thought that one partner had in regards to saying, I wish that we communicated just a little bit more effectively. Like, I really want to make some sense with you and I, and I want to communicate to you and I want you to understand me and I want to be understood by you and I want you to, to feel understood by me. And someone has that thought. And that thought sends a series of events where then perhaps the other person in the relationships stumbles upon a video, stumbles upon a post, stumbles upon an article, hears um, something, a quote, anything. And then that leads you down the road to engaging with who I am, what I have to offer. And now you're, you're my client. Now we're working together. Now your relationship is opening up in ways where you are now communicating, you are now feeling that you are being understood and you are understanding. And that all stemmed from a thought that someone had about, I would really love to just communicate with you better. You know, and our thoughts are incredibly powerful. And there is so much immense and intense power in our mind. And if we allow ourselves to engage in the power of our mind, we allow ourselves to have more sensual relationships because 
our our senses are also so deeply intertwined and connected to our mind and to our brain and how we create meanings and how we interpret things and feel about things. All of those things are oftentimes happening in our mind first, you know, especially as um, the society that we have been cultured in and conditioned to live in is a, a society that really highly have heavily um, relies on the mind and our mental capacities and our cognition abilities. And so when we engage the power of our mind, when we are relating with others, relating with ourselves, we can start to use the power of our thoughts to bring forth the engaging, loving, fulfilling relationships that we seek. You know, if we start to believe that, you know what? I know I may have believed before that people were against me and um, that things don't work out for me and I will have to struggle or uh, have strife to bring forth my plans or my goals. I can now take my power of my mind and, and start to tell myself new thoughts. I can start not telling myself that actually people are excited to hear from me. People are looking forward to the wisdom that I have to share. People are, you know, looking to learn more and connect with and to under understand and to be understood by you. You know, so we can use the power of our minds to really help us to um, engage in our relationships in ways that are much more intentional, much more mindful, much more fulfilling. And when we do that, we, we enrich our lives. You know, another sense, and I just want to hit on this one because I don't want to, I don't want to forget how important this particular sense is. And it's something that is often not considered a sense. Um, and so I wanna kind of broaden your mind just a little and, I, I, and just let's step out of our comfort zones and our boxes just for a moment. But I would like to think of our sense of ambition. So our sense of hope and the future. If you're familiar with the verse in the Bible of Jeremiah 29, 11, the very end of that verse, it says to give you a hope and a future. And that is your ambition. That is that sense of ambition, that sense of, hmm, greater could be there for me. Not just for the world, not just for those that you see or that are in your care or those that you love, but for yourself. And that particular sense of ambition is what actually drives and fuels your ability to connect more deeply with others. That is the, the sense that allows you to have more compassion with others because you are ambitious in learning about them. You're ambitious in loving them even more deeply. You're ambitious in showing up in ways that um, you have perhaps not have shown up before. So your sense of ambition, that sense, it's a sense. And it's a sense that I believe that we can continue to grow. All of these senses are, I would equate them to like muscles, that as we continue to exercise them, they continue to become stronger. You know, as you continue to train these senses, they only become more stronger they become more uh, effective, efficient. Um, they recover much more easily. Um, they can withstand, you know, impact much more easily. They become more resilient. They're more powerful. So I offer to you the increased awareness of the senses in that in which you actually have and how you can engage them in ways for yourself 
that create sensual relationships for you, that create sensational relationships for you. You know, understanding that you have the power of your inner knowing that can navigate you and guide you in how you can, something as responding to a text message. Your inner guidance can guide you there um, so that you are moving from a space of a deep rooted and seated knowing opposed to reactivity. You know, um, your sense, your sensual relationships allow you to come and enter your relationships from a space of um, steady and calmness. You, you don't have to engage in your relationships in a chaotic manner. There doesn't always have to be an energy of busyness and restlessness within your relationships. And when we cultivate more sensual relationships, the energies of chaos and of, of you know, things being hectic and, and just busy dissipate. They dissipate because your senses are now um, informing you and giving you knowledge and, and wisdom on how to interact, how to engage with yourself, how to engage with others in a way that, as I reminded you, was glorifying and edifying. And so when you are allowing yourself to engage your senses in a ways that is glorifying and edifying to you, you decrease the ways in which you show up that are not healthy and that underride or override, I should say, your, um, <clears throat> your desire for peaceful, sensual relationships, you know? So Opening yourself to central relationships can really be a game changer. Um, it's something that I find that is deeply rooted in whatever your spiritual practice is. Um, they are not often separate. You know, your ability to engage in these senses, these senses, especially the ones that I would quantify as your supernatural senses or your senses of peacemaking and forgiveness that is supernatural boo um <laughs> your sense of of ambition and your sense of intuition recognizing that these are supernatural gifts supernatural senses that we all possess and when we are able to allow ourselves to get in the vibration of of these senses and really allow these senses to sort of come up and out and flourish, uh, it changes the way that you get to show up. It ch changes the way that your, um, your connections are, you know, your marriage will get better. <laughs> your relationships will get better. I, I don't know what else to say. Um, you know, uh, I, and I can say that with, with real confidence that, and that's not just relating with, you know, people, you know, your relationship with yourself, how you love yourself, how you love your body gets better. You know, your relationship with your possessions and the things that you have or don't have uh, gets better. You know, uh, your self-speech and how you speak to yourself, that gets better. You know, um, it just becomes much more enriched. And, and I really believe in my heart that if you're here, that's what you want to, <laughs> like, that's what you want to. Um, so, you know, open your mind to consider how you can engage with all of your senses, you know, moving past the ones that uh, we typically engage in. And actually I wouldn't even say moving past, deepening those ones as well, but adding on, adding on, you know, we're adding on, we're, we're multiplying our gifts. We are allowing ourselves to experience more. And, and this is how we can build the capacity to have more. 
is by slowly and and intentionally opening yourself up to central relationships and relationships that allow your senses to be more engaged. And I do want to say, and just, I would love to reiterate that it's okay if your senses or your sensations that you experience are not always pleasant or they're not always the ones that are desirable. For example, I myself have had a interesting relationship with the emotion of anger and the emotion of rage. And um, I've had to learn that, you know, because I have been conditioned to suppress that particular emotion when it does present itself, I often had very in, um, difficult, difficult conversations with myself internally. Um, I can become very uh, self-defecating. I can become very mean to myself if I don't really allow those emotions to actually have a space and a place to communicate. And so your sense, your senses indicate to you just what, what's there, what's here, what's, what is circulating in this temple that is you. Um, and it allows you to, 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 to express them in healthy ways. And, and I had to really understand that it's okay for me to experience these emotions. Um, it's okay for me to allow them to come up and out, um, and I can express them in ways that feels more true to me. I actually don't have to express them in the way that I have been taught that anger and rage have to be expressed, right? I can express them in the ways that feel actually more intuitive to me, not necessarily what I have been conditioned. That is the ways in which I, I am allowed to express my rage or anger. Um, and so sensational relationships and sensual relationships give you more power, more sovereignty, and more autonomy over how you show up for you and how you show up for others. Because you no longer are being pulled and navigated by um, what is happening outside of you and being dictated on how to move based on what's happening outside of you. You can really allow the internal to navigate the out, the, the external. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope y'all are catching what I'm putting down here. Uh, I, I pray that this has been um, informing and in, uh, insightful to you. Uh, I spoke a lot. <laughs> I said a lot. <laughs> and I, I trust that it will be received in the ways in which um, God intends for you to receive them and uh, to allow whatever comes up, whatever senses, whatever feelings, all those things to come up and out and allow them to, to, to have their audience and to share their wisdom with you so you can develop and evolve how you will show up in your sensual life and, and, and engaging your senses and living a life that your senses get to play and your senses get to experience and your senses really get to enjoy themselves because they're here to give you enjoyment. They're here to give you um, wisdom. They're here to help you experience your life to the full. Like our senses are really here to help us experience life to the full. And so if you are on an abundance journey, if you are on a, a path of where you are navigating and leaving what may have been the grips of lack, poverty, scarcity, um, or just less than sort of mindsets and experiences and circumstances, however they may have manifested in your life, um, abundance is really allowing your senses to fully open and fully experience life. That's also what abundance is. It's not just accumulating uh, things. It is also opening up and expanding your senses and how your senses engage because your senses really help us help you to 
navigate your world and move through your world. So that's it. That's all, y'all. <laughs> it has been um, great. I'm here for this like sunlight that's like coming in on the window. At first, I was kind of like, oh no, it's creating a shadow. And then I was just like, excuse me, <laughs> the light will always shine. And so, you know, that's to show you that, you know, even in the moment, you can have conversations with yourself that want to come up and out. And um, you can show love and reverence. I gave that thought an audience. It told me, hey, maybe you should, you know, change your camera lens or turn the camera. And I really allowed myself to sit in a space of actually this is light and I am not going to shy away from light. I am going to allow light in and allow it to do what it needs to do. Um, so that's how we can do this and have our central relationships with ourselves in real time. Uh, I share that with you now just as a, um, a space of openness and transparency and vulnerability that this is what you can do in the moment. Like it doesn't have to be these things that you, um, you know, that are difficult. It's really having a conversation with yourself in moment in real time that is edifying and that is glorifying and i and and you allow that to inform how you move so shout out to the light <laughs> and uh thank you again so much for being here for listening in um you know if you need any additional support you can definitely find all the links to how you can be supported through uh, my work, through my energy, through my offerings. You, the, everything will be there at the link in the bio, um, at the bottom of the video. And um, I pray that, you know, you're continuing to be blessed, like continue to move forward, take this information, take what you need, leave the rest. And um, it's something that continue can, can continue to live on. And so you can continue to come back to it and grab a little bit more and, you know, leave what you don't need and um, be blessed, continue to be a blessing, to bring blessings and to, you know, just be a blessing to others. And so thank you again for being here for uh, Overflow and being in this episode with me, listening in and engaging and um, having this very sensual relationship with me. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, so thanks again, and um, I look forward to talking some more with you on the next one. All right, until next time, bye.